This is Dr. Lauren Lownan from Keene State College, and this is a short video lecture around the topic of allele frequencies, genotype frequencies, I suppose I should have written phenotype frequencies, and um, all of this as a lead into um, evolution and also something called the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and an equation derived from that equilibrium. This is part of um, a few lecture series and these are the learning goals that we're going to be addressing in that lecture series. If you want to stop and look at them in detail, you can pause the video and typo here. Here we go. Um, so to ground this idea in the area of evolution, earlier in class you learned about evolution and how it is genetic change over time. And that there can be both micro and macro evolution. Please pardon my husband sneezing in the background. Micro and macro evolution are both about change in the genetic composition of a population. Micro evolution means you have a change in the allele frequency within a population over generations. For example, you could look at a coronavirus that's actively infecting humans, and you could look and see what it looked like when it was in a bat reservoir, what it looked like when it was in the first human that was infected, and then what it looks like in all of the thousands of human, humans infected since then. And what you would find is you would find evidence for genetic change within that one species of coronavirus. So there's change within the context of a species genetically, and that's microevolution. Macroevolution essentially means that the microevolution has gone on for a while and that it has been significant enough that we've actually had speciation events. So that's the kind of evolution, evolutionary change where you know you get birds distinguished from their dinosaur ancestors. So by the way, we're now talking about populations. And a population is a group of the same organisms living in the same place generally at the same time. Allele frequency, another term that I've started to use already, means the proportion of an allele of interest relative to all the possible alleles for a given gene in a population. Hey, good grief. Fix that. Okay, so. So far in class, we've been learning about Mendelian genetics, and in Mendelian genetics, we're considering alleles, yes, um, but we're generally considering alleles within the context of one eukaryotic diploid organism. And each single organism can only carry a maximum of two alleles. And we've talked in Mendelian genetics about how that means then we could transmit either of those into our gametes and so on and so forth. Now we're going to take this idea and we're going to extrapolate it sort of up and out, and we're going to think about populations. So we're going to consider that uh, all of the alleles for a given gene in an entire population. So in real life, you should know that each single gene generally actually exists in populations, in, at least globally speaking, in potentially thousands of different forms. We are still going to simplify the system, and we're only going to consider each gene as having two possible types of alleles, and we're going to say that they can occur at any frequency in a population as long as the frequency of one plus the frequency of the other sums to one, accounting for 100% of all the alleles. So, for example, if we were looking at the A gene and we said it can exist as the little a allele or the big a allele, whatever the frequency of the little a allele is, plus the frequency of the big A allele within a population has got to sum to 1 or 100% to account for all the possible alleles in that, um, in that population. So how do you know what the allele frequency is in a population? Well, the simplest way to figure that out is to count it. So you can either look at phenotype and phenotype frequency in a population, and from that infer genotype using Mendelian genetics knowledge, or you can directly measure the genotype by doing molecular biology. So 
So let's look at this snapshot of a population of 10 mice. They're brown or they're black. That's the phenotype that we're interested in. And for now, could you just please ignore this stuff up at the top and ignore the letters that di dictate or have assigned the genotype here. Just look at the colors of the mice, okay? And ask the question, what's the phenotype frequency in this generation or this population, okay? So this is a population of mice, 10 mice, all from the same generation, we'll say. So here are the 10 mice, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 8 out of 10 are brown, and 2 out of 10 are, are gray or, or black. Okay? So if we want to know the frequency of the browns and the frequency of the grays, it's 80% browns, 20% grays. All right, that's simple, right? Look, score, count, calculate frequency. All right, well, if you know some stuff about the genetics of these mice, as the researchers doing this study did, then you can take the phenotype and you can assign the genotype. And um, I apologize for all my typing errors here. Um, so here's our population, the same one we were looking at before. And here's our, um, our two, you know, grayish mice, right? And let's say these researchers have now gone in and they have... Um, measured the genotypes of all these organisms genetically. They could have figured out that these guys were little a, little a, if they knew that the little a allele was recessive to the big a allele and associated with gray color. So we'll, we'll say they didn't even have to do molecular biology on those guys, but these guys could have been either homozygous or heterozygous. So they did some molecular biology and they actually measured the alleles that were present. And so they've put these letters in to symbolize the genotypes. You're familiar with that symbolism. And we can go through and we can say that the frequency of big A, big A genotype is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 10, which is 60%. The frequency of the heterozygote is 1, 2 out of 10. It's 20%. And, you know, if I've done that counting correct, I know this has actually got to be 20% by default because they have to sum to 100 but I can also look at that and double check 1 2 out of 10 is 2 out of 10 is 20 percent some pretty simple not even math just numeracy here so okay let's keep going with this because what I really want to focus on is how do you know what the allele frequency in this generation or population is okay. <laughs> excuse me so all right, so we're going to want to let me get that where you can see it. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to count the total number of organisms, and it's 10. We already did that. And we're going to remember that these are diploid organisms. So each one of those has two alleles for the A gene because they're diploid. And um, we're also assuming this is not autosomal or not a sex-linked gene, by the way. So we can count the total number of alleles in this population of 10 mice by saying it's two alleles per organism times the number of organisms is 10, and that's 20. And then once I've got that as my denominator, I can determine the allele frequency. There are only two alleles, so there can only be two allele frequencies, and together they have to sum to one when expressed as a frequency. Here, if I've counted correctly, I should get up to a total of 20 because that's what's entirely found within this population. So the number of big A alleles, I can just go through and I can count, and I get 14. The number of little a alleles, I can go through and I can count, and I get four from these homozygous recessive guys, five and six from the two heterozygotes, so that's six total. So from that, I know that, uh, let me just go back and finish that. I know that 14 out of 20 would be the frequency for the um, uh, big A allele and 6 out of 20 would be the frequency for the little a allele. Okay, whoops. All right, so we can go about that a little bit differently too or make it maybe a little bit more straightforward. Okay, so again, it's not just the generation. Not my day with technology. 
Okay, so um, the total number of alleles of all kinds was 20 in this population of 10. The number of big A alleles can be obtained a little more formulaically. So we can say that that will be two times the number of homozygous dominant animals or organisms plus one time the number of heterozygotes. Because every mouse that has a genotype like this contributes two big A alleles, every mouse with an, a genotype like this contributes one big A allele. And I should still get 14, um, 14 out of 20 of the total alleles in this population are big A. Similarly, I can go through and I can ask how many little a alleles. It'll be two times the number of homozygous recessive animals plus one times the number of heterozygotes. And that's going to get me six, right? And that's six out of 20. So the frequency of the big A allele is 14 out of 20, right? I can reduce that fraction. I've just left it simple here. The frequency of the little a allele is six out of 20. And together they have to sum to one. 14 plus 6 would be 20. 20 over 20 is 1. Good to go. So what does any of this have to do with um, the opening to this short lecture where I defined evolution as a change in the allele frequency within a population, or at least that's our definition from microevolution? Well, if you want to know if the allele frequency has changed in a population over generations, you have to be able to go in and measure those alleles or count them somehow. And we just did the counting part. So here I'm going to put that same population in a different context for you. Uh, we, this is a one generation of those mice. We just looked at this generation. It's the second generation in this study. <coughs> and this is the third generation. This isn't a real study. Because in a real study, you need to have larger sample size, by the way. But... So here in this first generation, the authors went through, and they, the authors of this figure went through, and they calculated the allele frequency for big A and little a, and it's 0.5 and 0.5. And then we just calculated the frequency for uh, big A and little a, and it's 0.7 and 0.3. If we had simplified that fraction, that's what we would have gotten. <coughs> and then in the third generation, we're seeing Big A is 0.9, and little a is 0.1. We could look at just two of these, and here we're looking at three. In either case, right, the point is that the allele frequency is changing over successive generations. That is evidence for evolution. That's what evolution is, okay? So once you know that, and you can only get there by looking at the allele frequency, well, then you might ask, well, why? Like, what is driving this evolution? Most of you have heard the term natural selection, and so let me show you a possible reason, <coughs> and that is natural selection. This is an hypothesis, right? Or it could be that the researchers collected data and they saw that this really was happening. Mice have a pretty short life cycle, and it would be possible to do this experiment in a wild population. But the fox, in this case, appears to be, if I look at this, I would say, well, the gray mice are decreasing in frequency. And that suggests to me that perhaps they are being selected against by the fox by predation. So the fox is able to see these guys better than the brown mice, and the fox is eating them more, and so therefore they are not surviving and passing on that little a allele. And so over time, instead, the brown mice are surviving, reproducing, and passing on the big A allele. And that is resulting in a selective pressure where we see an increase in the frequency of the big A allele and a corresponding decrease in the little allele and a shift in this population over time that is due to genetic change. Um, and that's a pretty reasonable explanation for this situation. Now, I want to point out one more thing as you're looking at this slide, and that is these letters P and Q, okay? So P and Q, by convention, in population genetics, little p is used as the term to describe the frequency of the dominant allele, and little q is used by convention as the term to, de to describe the frequency of the recessive allele. Here, big A and little a, P and Q. 
Okay, and that's going to be important when we get to the Hardy-Weinberg equation.